Hello, World 2 family. Welcome back. Um, it's Abraham here, supervisor here at South Coast Walton Academy. And as you can recall from our last video, uh, me and my cousin started our own fabrication business right next to South Coast Walton Academy. And uh, this is some footage from the last video. Um, in the last video, I uh, showed you how to uh, water position weld on this tea on this tea spool right here. You know, um, uh, I, we wanted to get more footage for y'all, for the viewers, but since uh, we needed to hurry up with this project because the client wanted it, uh, we really didn't have enough time to film, film film more tutorials on the project uh but we did manage to catch some v-roll on the project and this is what we're, we're about to show y'all um right here you got me you know welding this uh position weld this pool out last last weld on it i took i i took the root uh took the whole weld out right here's part of the cap putting the last second final bead Right here, you got the uh, you got the cap. Um, I, mean, I was explaining on, you know, on how this spool gets made. So right here, we come back to this pressure vessel. So you see all these nozzles right here uh, sticking out of the pr pressure vessel. Uh, we wanted to show the welds on it, but like I said, uh, time was a factor. Uh, we needed to hurry up and finish this because the client did have a deadline for us. So unfortunately, we weren't able to, you know, but hopefully in the future, uh, we'll get another opportunity to just show you some tutorials on these nozzles. As you can tell right here, we're zooming into this nozzle. Uh, we did, the procedure done here was flux core. Uh, these nozzles were also welded out from the inside. So... First things first, before you weld the outside of the nozzles, you gotta weld the inside first, so that the uh, so that the vessel doesn't warp on you, you know. And after you finish welding the inside of the nozzles, you go ahead and put the uh, put the caps on, and weld those out, and then you weld the nozzles, so that uh, you know, you don't have any problem with warping. Right here, you can see a uh, weld it right there. As you can see right there, uh, that was a, a water lit right there. Um, if you're interested in seeing how that gets done, uh, we we're gonna, um, there's a link right here in the corner. You can go ahead and click on that, and that's a perfect tutorial on how to weld those water lits. You got, right here, you got my welder, Jesus. He's heating up the nozzle from the inside before he welds it. And the reason why he's doing this is because uh, he's pretty much taking out all the moisture He's yeah. He's pretty much uh getting rid of all the moisture that the that the vessel tank has and the nozzle has, uh, so he can avoid porosity. You know, this is a common practice for welders out there in fab shops, especially when uh when it's in the during the winter. You know, when the pipe is really cold. Uh, what can happen is if you start welding on a cold pipe, uh, with the moisture, it can uh get it can uh make you get porosity so right here just like i said uh, before we install the ca the uh the caps and before we weld the outside of the nozzles you have to weld the inside of the nozzle of the nozzles first so like right here he's uh he's he's putting in the root uh with, with mig um he's more than likely running around uh yeah. 18, 18 volts and probably like around uh 220 wire speed you know, I wasn't there because uh, I was welding my own pipe <laughs> or doing something in the shop. I was busy. I was working somewhere else. But my welder, Jesus, right here, he had he was tackling this and he did a really good job. Uh, man, really good welder. But if I had to guess, like I said, the volts he's probably running this at is probably like around 18, and the wire speed is probably like 220. Look at him go. You know, he's he's making that route. He's going downhill with it. Walking the cup, you know, it's a very common practice right here. What he's doing, he's right here. He's resting the nozzle on the pipe, and he's just walking it down. Pretty weird body position, but you know, when you weld pressure vessels and you gotta get inside, you gotta find a way to weld them. Uh, right here, he's getting full penetration. You can tell it's going in, it's going in there like butter. Very good welder. 
Very good. Well, then I don't have to double check his work. He takes pride in what he does. So, Jesus, if you ever watch this video, thank you for your hard work and for your awesome welds. Again, he's feathering, making sure he has a proper tie-in. Yeah, so uh, right here he's doing uh, he's he's doing the root with MIG, and then he is gonna go over that bead with flux core. Um, after he finishes the root, like I said, he, you weld the inside first, the inside of the nozzles, and then you can weld the outside, and you weld the outside with flux core. Yeah. Only the root is done with uh, with MIG. You know. Again, he's doing the other nozzle. There, there, it had about three big nozzles and like two little, two little nozzles. But again, he's walking the cup downhill, yeah. using yeah. one hand. Yeah. Right here, as you can see, he transitioned from walking the cup to freehanding. And then again, he's using his left hand now. Yeah, so this is the type of for y'all for y'all wa inspiring welders looking to work at fab shops, you know, pressure vessel shops. This is what you're looking forward to doing. You know, uh, you do have to get in there and figure out a way to put that root in. A great example of why it's good to know how to weld with your left hand and your right hand. And right here we switch over to these T spools. Uh, they're already finished, ready to get shipped out. You know, there was three of these. I did one myself on one video. Again, you can look at all these welds. Uh, we did wanted to show you all of these welds, but uh, time was a factor. We had a deadline to meet, so uh, fortunately we couldn't. And uh, hopefully in the future, when we have future projects, uh, we can actually, uh, you know, make more tutorials on, on these welds, on fabrication also. DNA industry. Damn, it would have been cool to shoot. But yeah, these were just slip on flanges. Very, very easy. Uh we did use a, a jig uh to cap these flanges. And also with these wells, we use a jig to to cap these flanges. Um if you recall I did a, a couple months ago, probably like a year ago, I did a video on how to do a twelve inch how to make and flux a twelve inch pipe on a rollout and I did use a a stand for my uh, flux core going for the cap. So there'd also be another link right here on the corner, um, probably the top right corner or somewhere, um, where you can go back to that video and see how that's done. That's my 2B cap right there. And right here, we did these. This is a 3B cap right here, uh, done with flux core with a stand. Here we got Jesus again. He's prepping the uh, pressure vessel to for clean for welding. So right here, he's uh he, he finished flushing it right here, and um he's prepping it to throw the cap cap on there. You know, he's making sure his uh, uh it's flush as possible. Here you got some more shots of nozzles. You could tell that roots in there really, really good. It was done through the inside, and then the cap was placed on there, and he's getting ready to cap it. And then we uh, actually hooked this uh, this vessel to a positioner turntable, you know, um, right here to the left. We bolted two bolts in it, and we aligned it in the middle. And we centered it. Uh, this is a common, common, common. Uh, piece of machinery you see at pressure vessel shops just like this one and they could they are some are very old and some are in some are newer than others you know this one's a very very old old positioner table um that that actually still works and as you can see it's still making money it's probably been ma making money since way before i was born and we're gonna <laughs> try to squeeze more sense out of this thing yeah, so that's pretty cool right here he's modifying the uh the uh his uh, flux, core, flux core stand position, that's what we call that, because he puts the gun in there, and it holds the flux core gun in place, and he's able to weld with it. He's able to throw down a really good cap with it.
And like for the most part, uh, every welder makes their own jig according to how they like it. And that's ready to cap. All right, guys. So this is pretty cool. Uh, pretty cool uh, footage right here. As you can see, he's placing his uh, the flux core gun on that jig uh, that he modified. He we just saw him modifying. Um, you know, right now we're he's making sure uh, he he puts it in the right location. Right here, he's uh he's finding his uh right here he's setting his turn his turntable speed you know you need the right speed so that your cap can uh can turn out good you know because if you go too fast your beat turns out too too small if you go too slow your beat turns out too too fat you know so it's just about finding the right speed for your turntable to turn as you cap now again you see uh jesus right here he's warming up the pressure vessel he's warming up with a torch um, he's he's taking all, all the moisture out of it so that he gets no porosity. And he's you know he's aligning his uh, positioner, making sure everything's good. Right here, he's checking that everything is good to go. He's checking that uh, you know that as the pressure vessel spins, it's not gonna hit it and move it out of place. And he's about ready to go right here. He does have the uh, hold. F he has a three second hold function on where uh, he's going to hold the trigger for three seconds and then he's going to let it go. And that's just going to, and the wire's still going to keep flowing, flowing through. And uh, he's capping right now. And this is how mainly everybody caps at these fab shops, these pressure vessel shops. This is what they do. Um, right here, uh, I see cameraman zooms in into the his uh his settings. Uh, he's running about. So these are his settings right now for his flux core. He he has it around a 420, 410 wire speed. He's capping at 31 volts <coughs> and about 410, 420 wire speed. Right here, just check it. That everything's coming out good. You know that he has that his uh the flow flow score gun is where he wants it to be. That his beats coming out straight. That everything is aligned. There he he's adjusting his <coughs> his uh his uh distance from the pressure vessel to his gun. Great shot of the jig for anybody that wants to know how we made it or how he made it. Uh, you have an idea right there. A couple bolts and a little bit of piping and an angle and a bolt. That's all it takes. Again, he's, uh, he just finished the first bead. Now he's placing his second bead. Now he's, uh, he's welding his, with his, his second bead on there. Right here, he, he finished a bead. I believe that was the second, or, or yeah, that's the second bead right there. He finished. And he's about to get ready to put his final bead on there. As he can think, as he can see, that bead is slick, really, really slick. I'm really glad glad to share this uh this footage with y'all because uh. This actually uh, answers a lot of questions for y'all inspiring welders who wants to work work at uh, who want to work at shops. You know, this is what you do most of the time or a lot of the time. You know, and he's checking that everything's still aligned. Yeah. And boom, he's off to his last speed. You know, he 
He he goes to the other side to make sure that there's no porosity, you know. Sometimes it, it does happen where uh, you you start capping, and you really don't know what's going under that flag. You really don't know if there's any porosity on this flag. So when he goes to the other side, that's what he's checking for to see how his bead looks, you know. You know if he likes what he sees and he lets it spin. Got some footage of, of the bead, how it came out, how it came out, how it came out. As you can see, it's very, very good. <laughs> right here, he, he finished right here, and he's wildwooding the whole thing, getting rid of all the buck shots, you know, making sure everything is A1. And bam, we have a three bead cap right here, guys. And this is how you cap a pressure vessel using a positioner and flux core. Mm, slick, slick, slick. I can eat off of that. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that that's pretty much it what we got in this uh, video right here. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And like I said, uh, unfortunately, we couldn't uh, do more tutorials on this project. But like I said, um, have a good day. Have a good one.